Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I hope I can remember how to do this. It's been a while since I filmed because I was traveling and a lot of the videos that you saw last week were pre-recorded videos. My voice is kind of going out a little bit. Uh -uh -uh. But nonetheless, we will we will continue continue for henceforth go forward with our with our work today. Um, it is Sunday. I am pre recording this for Monday for tomorrow. And just a little side note before we get into the sixth tablet, if you are somebody that is joining me on Sundays at Sacred Garden Yoga for the primary series lead class, if you're joining me on Zoom, that is, um, we are going to start to work through the full primary series. Um, if you are brand new to yoga, then this is obviously something that might be a little much much for you just because it's primary series does not mean that it's primary it's just the primary series because it's yoga to keep that's physical therapy and we've been doing half primary series for the first half for a very long time and we're starting to add in the second half of it which is some advanced postures so like like behind the head posture all sorts of stuff so if that's something you're interested interested in i am going to put a link to my friend morgan his um his YouTube page, Ashtanga Nurse, um, and his full primary series. You guys are probably familiar by now with his half primary series, but he has a very beautiful full primary series that I'm going to put in the link below so that you can see what the full primary series looks like because we are going to start working the full primary series. And this is why I tell you guys it takes about 10 years to work through each series. So don't beat yourself up with that being said. All right. I will also, on top of that, I will be putting a link to Sacred Garden Yoga in case you're like, what is this she's talking about? I didn't know I could practice with her every week. Yes, you can practice with me every week. Um, you can practice with me on Sunday mornings at Sacred Garden Yoga. I have a live class that happens there. The class is usually pretty packed, but now we're offering Zoom options. So you can Zoom in and practice with me and all my local students on Sunday mornings. And I would love to have you if, um, if that's something you're interested in. All right, so we're going to get into Tablet 6 today. I'm excited about this tablet. I haven't read it yet, but it's titled The Key of Magic. What I think we're going to do, this is what we did last time on Aquarius Rising Africa, is I'm going to read through, first I'm going to read through Thoth's writing, and then we're going to go back and look at Doriel's commentary. Once again, I am using Doriel's commentary. There's many commentaries on the Emerald Tablets. As always, please get your own copy if you can, because it's super important that you have your own information and you're not just like going off of what I'm saying or what other people are saying, but you actually have the resource yourself to come to your own conclusions and have your own perception of what Thoth is saying. All right, so let's get started with uh, tablet number six, the key of magic. So this is Thoth speaking. Hark ye, O man, to the wisdom of magic. Hark to the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long, long ago, in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light. Men then as now were filled with both darkness and light. And while some darkness held sway, in others light filled, filled the soul. And so again, he's he's referring to what happened with the fall of Atlantis. And if this is your first time listening to this series on my channel, welcome. So glad you're here, but you might want to go back and I will put all the other videos of the Emerald tablets down in the description box below. You might want to start at the beginning um, because at each tablet is very fascinating because he kind of goes back and forth. He talks about like what, ha what happened was like what happened when Atlantis fell, what, it, what we were as Atlanteans. And then like tablet three, he basically is teaching you like how to be a good person. Like don't gossip, don't do all these things, keep your vibration high. And now we're going to go, now we're, it seems like we're leading into like also what we knew in Atlantis that we don't know now. And as you guys know, if you've been around the last tablet, the fifth tablet, the Dweller Ubunal has been like my favorite so far because, wow, it was so mysterious. And I, I think um, we're starting to understand more stuff now because we know our geography isn't what they say it is. So um, and what he's saying here with the darkness and the light, that's the power struggle, right? That's the friction. That's the polarity of third density. As if, you, if you follow the law of one, you understand that polarity of the third density, which brings us to the, the density of choice. You have to make a choice. I had somebody ask me in the comment section about eating meat. Like, why is it okay that animals eat meat, but we're not supposed to? Well, because animals are second density. They're not in the realm of choice. You are. You are a higher, considered a higher, not not higher consciousness in the in the 
realm that you are any better than the animals. No, mis do not mistake that. You are not any better than the animals as far as consciousness. You just have a deeper understanding because you've harvested to third density. So now you have to make choices. Animals are not in the density of choice. Second density is not the density of choice, right? Next, when they do get into third density, when they do take on a human body, then they will be in choice as well. So you humans, everything you do is either for the light or for the dark, right? So there are laws of forgiveness. For example, if you're out walking around the fields, you're going to step on some bugs that you didn't know were there, right? You didn't kill the bug intentionally, right? So, so that's a law of forgiveness. You're forgiven for that. But when you know better, when you understand that when you're eating a hamburger, you're eating the flesh of a tortured creature, you are actively choosing service to self and not service to others. You are actively choosing the darkness. Now, this does not mean that you're going to graduate into service to self. You have to be like 96% service to self and you have to be for the light, not 51% service to others. So you can have some fuck ups here and there. Like, you know, you can have, you can have some, some, some mess ups, but the more you start to understand choice, the more you want to hopefully make better choices, right? What's, what's, um, what's going to serve humanity to its highest consciousness, right? We also know from the law of one that martyrdom is a negative trait, like to sacrifice yourself for, for anything else is considered demonic, right? Which we know we see that with what they do in the Luciferian side is they're constantly doing sacrifices, right? And eating flesh and all that kind of stuff, which is what they do in the churches too. So that's all demonic. That's all satanic, which is if that's the path you want to go on, then you're going to pick to go on that path, right? But if you want to go into the light, you're going to focus on your karma, on dharma, on, on being you know, the one of the Bible verses that I like, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you were a cow and you had a calf, how would you feel if a higher density being came and took that calf from you to eat it? Like put yourself in that shoes because you have the ability to do that, right? So that's that's the difference. And, and yeah, so we know that with Atlantis, when Atlantis fell, it was a huge template of graduating to darkness and light. Like there's a huge light and dark happening polarity choice and we understand that our um ancestors are we when we were there ourselves that we understood more about life about consciousness about magic right that we are magic and this this friction started to get really intense between the darkness and light just like we're seeing right now in our world right and atlantis the darkness actually from what i understand took over and that's why it flooded yeah, because even in the law of one, uh, they'll tell you service to self only goes up to a certain density and then they have to start all over again at the bottom to eventually merge into the light because you, you can't, you can't, it all implodes on itself, right? You, you can't go that far in service to self. Yeah. So anyway, let me start that over again because that was super interesting. Harky, oh man, to the wisdom of magic. Harky to the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long, long ago in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light men that is now were filled with both darkness and light and while some darkness held sway and others light filled the soul i age old is this warfare the eternal struggle between darkness and light fiercely it is fought all through the ages using strange powers hidden to man adept have there been filled with blackness struggling always against the light but others there are who fill with brightness have ever conquered the darkness of night. Where'er ye may be in all ages and plains, surely ye shall know the battle with night. Long ages ago, the sons of the morning descending found the world filled with night. There in that past time began the struggle, the age old battle of darkness, light. And again, we've talked about this too, the macro and the micro, you know, with the shadow work challenge, you, we all have a shadow side. Um, I posted in my community tab a couple of days ago of a psychiatrist uh, from a reality show who gave an excellent um, breakdown commentary on shadow work and how necessary shadow work is. If you don't tend to your shadow side, if you don't acknowledge the sides in, of you that are low vibrational, the jealousy, the abandonment, the betrayal, trauma, all that stuff. If you try to hide that, it's just going to intensify. What we resist will persist. 
and we'll get more powerful. But when we're able to acknowledge our triggers and bring them to the light and work through them, then we brought them to the light. And what's the one thing that can get rid of darkness? It's light. You go into a dark room, you flick the switch on. It doesn't like, it's not like it slowly gets light. It immediately gets light, right? So that's why shadow work is so important. That's why it's good to be triggered. If you're triggered by something, you, people do this to me all the time. They get all triggered and they get a comment section. They real abusive in the comment section. It's not my trigger. It's not my fault you're triggered. It's, it's you. You know, we, we see that in this truther community where we get all upset because our friends and our families are asleep. Well, we're not upset because they're asleep. What's being triggered in us is parts of us that are still asleep, that our soul's telling us to pay attention to because everything's a mirror. And so when he's talking about for some in the light, they were able to, to walk forth towards the darkness and turn it to light because they did their own shadow work. If you ignore it, it's not going anywhere. You're just going to have to deal with it next life, right? That's, that's all karma is. Karma is just cause and effect. It's just your work. All right. Many in that time were so filled with darkness that only fleebly flamed the light from the night. Some there were month, some there were masters of darkness who sought to fill all with their darkness, sought to draw others into their night. Fiercely withstood they the masters of brightness. Fiercely they from the darkness of night sought they ever to tighten the feathers, the chains that bind man to the darkness of night. Used they always dark magic brought into man the power of darkness magic that enshroud man's soul with darkness we know all about black magic on this channel listen listen you do not want to mess with black magic okay first of all any type of magic light or black has to come through you first as a conduit so it's never going to work out for you it might work out for you for a hot second but you're constantly going to be having to serve that right where light magic is not that way. You you can do something good. You can help others and then it's done, right? And the thing about harvesting negative, so the people that want to go to a negative polarity, if they can get you, if they can manipulate your energy, then that makes them stronger in the negative. That is why I keep telling you guys, 90% of the truthers that you watch on YouTube are part of the cabal. They're purposely infiltrating you because they can feed off of you. And that makes them stronger on the negative side. So this is why you have to have discernment. So you have to do your own research so they don't fall for it. All right. Banded together and as order, brothers of darkness, they through the ages, antagonists, they to the children of men. Walk they always secret and hidden found yet not found by the children of men. Forever they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light in darkness of night. And what's a great way to hide in darkness? Infiltrate the light. Remember, darkness can't create anything. Only the light can. So what does the darkness do? It mimics the light. Or it steals from the light and inverts it. Again, we see that in our own community. Silently, secretly, Use they their power enslaving and binding the souls of men. Exactly. Boom, 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 boom. I'm telling you guys, these like truthers that you think are truthers, you're out there parroting everything they say when you haven't done your own research and they're just binding your soul to the darkness. And you're allowing it because you're consenting and you're just repeating what they're saying. And, I, and here they talked about um, brothers of darkness. There's a Luciferian brotherhood too. Most of the 90% of the truthers are part of it. Right? I mean, think about the French Revolution, you guys. Like, this is history repeating itself. When the French Revolution started, it started as a good thing. The people against the 1%, they wanted their, their own sovereignty back. Well, what happened was that the controllers got involved with the revolution and turned it around and ended up beheading the people that started the revolution. And they ended up giving the country back to the controllers. That's happening in this community too, right? We talk about MK Ultra Mind Control, right? The controllers are here and we look at the other side of this, the people on the left, the, the normies as they're called, and we see them, oh, bless their hearts. They're being totally brainwashed by the media, by mainstream media. Well, so are you. It's just your mainstream media is now YouTube. It's the same thing. 
you're being brainwashed as well. Yeah, there is a great awakening that's happening. But the controllers are not stupid. And they're going to do everything they can to try to navigate this negative because that gives them more power. So I'm so glad that this is coming up with the Emerald Tablets because I, I really just, oh my God, it breaks my heart. Stop repeating what other, do not come in my comment section and be like, this person says this or this person says that. I don't give a shit because most of those people you are, you're quoting are cabal. It's just like quoting Dr. F or Zuckerberg, right? I don't care. They're infiltrators. I know that. What do you think? Where's your research? Take your power back. Because you're just having your soul binded over here in the YouTube land, which is another form of media where you're being mind controlled, just like what happened at the French Revolution. Come on. Like, wake up. Wake up, right? All right. Unseen they come and unseen they go. Man in his ignorance calls them from below. Dark in the way of the dark brothers travel. Dark with a darkness, not of the night. Travel o'er earth. They walk through man's dreams. Powers they have gained from the darkness around them. To call other dwellers from out of their place. In ways that are dark and unseen by man. Into man's mind space reach the dark brothers. Around it they close the veil of their night. There through its lifetime the soul dwells in bondage bound by the feathers of the veil of the night. Mighty are they in the hidden, forbidden knowledge, forbidden because it is one with the night. Don't think that needs any commentary. Hark ye, O man, and listen to my warning. Be free from the bondage of night. Surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness. Don't give your soul over to truthers. Don't even quote me. Do you? That's why I'm telling you, get this is why I read this live to you guys. It's right here. You can get your own copy. Don't even quote me. I'm just researching like you should be research. Research for yourself. Right? Don't give your soul over to these people on YouTube that you don't know who are paid by the three letter agency to derail you. Thank you, Thoth. Thank you, Thoth, for, for bringing this up. Keep thy face ever turned towards the light. Know ye not, O man, that your sorrow only has come through the veil of night. I, man, heed ye my warning. Strive ever upward. Turn your soul towards the light. The brothers of darkness seek for their brothers, for those who have traveled the pathway of light. For well know they that those who have traveled far, far towards the sun of their pathway of light have great and yet greater power to bind the darkness with the children of light. Black magic. I've dealt with it for fucking years now. I mean, I have so many pictures that I could show you guys. I'm not going to until I can. They know things. Don't think they don't know things. They know how to use things that you don't know how to use. The only thing you can do is stand up for yourself and say, I do not consent. And I revoke any permission you think you have to use my wounds as an entry point. You got to go. And if they break that consent, then they've got a higher power they're going to have to deal with far beyond this plane of existence. List ye, O man, to he who comes to you, but weigh in the balance of his words be of light. For many they, there are who walk in dark brightness, yet are not the children of light. Right? Because they're mimicking. They're mimicking the light. There, there are a lot of divination people in the truth or community. I love divination, but they are not divining for the good. They are mimicking the light to try to suck you in and spell cast you into following them. It's like the Pied Piper, right? Go follow the Pied Piper. That's what they're doing. That's what they're paid to do. Easy it is to follow their pathway. Easy to follow the path they lead. But yet, oh man, heed my warning. Light comes only to him who strives. Hard is the pathway that leads to wisdom. Hard is the pathway that leads to light. Yes, it takes effort. It takes, I mean, hello, thank you, thought. Like, this is a huge part of this channel. It's fucking hard. It's hard 
to get on your yoga mat every day. It's hard to, to really strive to have wisdom and understanding when it comes to the soul and it comes to consciousness. Every trip I've taken to India has not been a vacation. It's never been for my own entertainment. I'm there to work. I'm up at two o'clock in the morning for Brahma Morta. I'm having my ass handed to me. I'm sweating my butt off. I'm doing chants and learning Sanskrit that are making me shake and, and, and making me face truths about myself that I have to work through so that I can pull up my own shadow side to the light. It is not easy. And you, yes, you need a teacher. You can't just sit around and eat fucking popcorn and expect all of a sudden everything to get better. It doesn't work that way. You have to have friction. You have to have opposing forces. You have to be uncomfortable. You will not prog progress in spirituality until you get uncomfortable. Until you feel that need to want to run. and but, you, but instead of running, you stay. Right? So thank you, Thoth. Thank you for reiterating everything we've been saying on this channel. And Shanti has been saying. And Tamara has been saying. All these true spiritualists have been saying. The fake spiritualists are out there telling you, don't worry about it. Sit back. It's just a movie. The White Hats have control. No, they don't. Honey, no, they don't. Read the law of one. Do, do put effort in. Do your research. If you if everybody read the law of one, they would 100% be like, oh, you're a fucking infiltrator because I, I, I know the plan now. I see the template of what this is, right? So you have to put forth effort. You can't just sit around all day eating popcorn, watching YouTube. You got to actually do something to heal yourself. Journal, exercise, take, watch your diet, do the doshas, go see an Ayurveda, really work on yourself, right? And by working on yourself, I don't mean getting manicures every day. I mean allowing yourself to get triggered and then going in and leaning into that before you project it onto someone else so that you can heal you so you can work your on your own karma yeah all right many shall you find the stones in your pathway many the mountains to climb towards the light yet know ye O man to him that cometh free will be of the pathway of light follow ye not the dark brothers ever always be ye a child of light for ye, for know ye, O man, in the end light must conquer, and darkness and night be banished from light. Listen, O man, and heed ye this wisdom. Even as darkness, so is the light. When the darkness is banished and all veils are rended, out there shall flash from the darkness the light. Even exist among them dark brothers, so there exist the brothers of light, antagonist they of the brothers of darkness, seeking to free men from the night. Powers have they, mighty and potent. Know the law, the planets obey. Work they ever in harmony and order, freeing man's soul from its bondage of night, secret and hidden, walk they also. Know not are they to the children of men, yet know that ever they walk with thee showing the way of the children of men for for have they fought the dark brothers conquered and conquering time without end yet always light shall be the end master driving away the darkness of night that gives me chill bumps i man know ye this knowing always beside thee walk the children of light master they of the sun power ever unseen yet the guardians of men open to all is their pathway open to he who will walk in the light free are they of dark amente free of the halls where light reigns supreme sons are they and lords of morning children of light to shine among men like man they are they and yet are unalike never divided were they in the past one had they been in oneness eternal Throughout all space since the beginning of time, up did they come in oneness with the all one, up from the first space, formed and unformed. Kind of is, again, mirroring what the law of one says, right? And yeah, there are, there are always beings around us. We know that. There are always guides trying to help us. The difference between the children of light and the children of darkness is that the children of light very much respect consent. Children of darkness, not so much, right? So you have to ask for their help. Given to man have they secrets that shall guard and protect him from all harm. He who would travel the path of the master free must be from the bondage of night. 
Conquer must be the formless and shapeless. Conquer must he the phantom of fear. Knowing must he gain all the secrets. Travel the pathway that leads through darkness. Yet ever before him keep the light of his goal. Obstacles great shall he meet in the pathway. Yet press on to the light of the sun. Hear ye, O man, the sun is the symbol of the light that shines at the end of thy road. Now to thee I give the secret how to meet the dark power, meet and conquer the fear from the night. Only by knowing can ye conquer, only by knowing can ye have light. That's giving me chill bumps, you guys. I um this last week I got heavily attacked again, like heavily. Um, and a lot of people had to step in and help because I was bumped and bruised and scratched and it was awful. And I was at the Sarah Garden this morning preparing for class and I was working on my journaling before people came in. And in Cindy's back garden, that the Shala kind of faces a back garden. She always has birds back there and they're usually like cardinals, red birds, blue birds sometimes. But I walked back there and for the first time in like over 10 years that I've worked there, I saw an American gold goldfinger, I think it's called. I had to look it up. It was a bright yellow bird. I'd never seen anything like it. So I immediately looked it up. And then I looked up its spiritual meaning and it basically was like the abundance of the sun and creativity and how the sun brings light. And it's crazy. Like I'm getting chill bumps reading this because I knew I was planning on doing this this afternoon when I got finished teaching for, for Monday, for Monday's reading. There's obviously a dog outside. My dog is probably barking out, but the fact that there was a golden, um, American Goldfinger outside, bright yellow bird, and they're they're talking about the light. I don't know. It's not lost on me. I know it might sound weird coming out of my mouth verbalizing it, but I see you, spirit. I see you. Now I give unto thee the knowledge known to the masters, the knowing that conquers all the dark fears. Use this, the wisdom I give thee. Masters thou shalt be of the brothers of night. When unto thee there comes a feeling, Drawing thee nearer to the dark gate, examine thy heart and find if the feeling thou hast has come from within. If thou shalt find the darkness, thine own thoughts, banish them forth from the place of thy mind. Send through the, thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first and regular second, repeating time after time until free. Start with the wave force in the brain center. Directed in the ways from thine head to thy foot. We do this in, in yoga. We talk about feeling the vibe. I see you, spirit. But if thou findest thy heart is not darkened, be sure that a force is directed to thee. Only by knowing can thou overcome it. Only by wisdom can thou hope to be free. Yes, knowledge is power and knowledge protects. Knowledge brings wisdom, and wisdom is power. Attain, and ye shall have power o'er all. Seek ye first a place bound in darkness, a place ye a circle about thee. Stand erect in the middle of that circle. Use thy this formula, and thou shalt be free. Raise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. Close thou thine eyes, and draw on the light. Call the spirit of light through the space-time. Using these words, and thou shalt be free. Fill thou my body, O spirit of life. Fill thou my body with spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name, I the seven, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. By their names, I call them to aid me, free me and save me from the darkness of night. Untanus. Pertals, Chaitel, and Goyana, Hertal, Simvata Ardal. And by their names, I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light. And we know this said that's the chakras, right? So it's it's like they're having you, I was trying to picture this in my head, and I probably will start doing this first thing tomorrow morning before my practice, create a circle around you. Stand. Close your eyes, feel the light coming up, asking for the light through Shashumna, right? The back of the spine where the chakras line up through Shashumna, coming up through the pelvic floor, up through, through the back, up through the top head. If you guys start doing that too, let me know what happens. We'll, we'll, we'll run a little experiment. 
Know ye, O man, that when ye have done this, ye shall be free from the feathers that bind ye, cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. See ye not the knaves have the power to free the vibrations that feathers that bind. Use them at need to free thou thine brother, so that he too may come forth from the night. Thou, O man, art thy brother's helper. Let him not lie in the bondage of night. Now unto thee I give my magic. Take it and dwell in the pathway of light. Light unto thee, life unto thee. Sun may thou be on the cycle above. All right, so that's what Thoth has to say. Let's go back and look at Doriel's commentary. This is powerful stuff, eh? So Doriel says, for tablet six, the key of magic. In this tablet, Thoth speaks of magic, using the term to denote the usage of developed powers in the warfare between the order and disorder. So order would be the light, disorder would be the darkness. This warfare has continued since the fall of man in the first cycle and will continue until the cosmic consciousness is ready to pass through Suntal. So I think he says Suntal or Suntal, S-U-N-T-A-L is not translated. I have a feeling that means like the ascension. Like if you remember, you go back to the very first tablet, Thoth is like, yo, I'm writing this for you guys now, meaning us right now, right? Because we're about to ascend. Yeah. We have two harvesting going. Two harvests are happening right now. We've got the negative harvest and the positive harvest. That's why it's so fucking crazy, right? So we're, both sides are harvesting to go through some tall. Once we get to fourth density, we will not be in a polarity of choice anymore. We will not be in a polarity of, of opposing forces anymore. I don't know what that's going to look like, but that's what the law of one says. So that makes sense. There are adepts who use the great powers of the cosmos for destruction instead of construction, for law operates either for good or evil, positive or negative. Those adepts who use cosmic force for destruction were the Dark Brothers, black magicians who fought against the Children of Light. They attempted to hold back and pull back those whom the Children of Light were trying to bring into the light, still, still doing that. They're still doing that. It's interesting, um, if you guys remember, years ago, we, we were going to the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Essenes were called what? What were the Essenes called? The children of light and what do we know the essenes are they're the egyptians the priests and priests of isis isis back then was spelled e-s-s-e -S -S -E. so another connection the black brotherhood is the antithesis of the white brotherhood one destroys the other binds the black brotherhood has an organization known today as the black duke pass the adepts have their cellas and the white adepts have theirs they pattern their organization after that of the white lodge and often deceive men into thinking they are of the white lodge they help men to gain certain things and powers until they have them in their toils yep we know all about this then when there is no escape they clamp down they have certain specific powers developed such as opening the seventh dimension and calling in elementals to fulfill their purpose mm -hmm. remember demons are called upon by witches and warlocks of the black of the darkness um demons are not there by choice they were fallen angels that were taken and basically chained to do the, the deeds of dark ones. So as I said before, I don't, it's not the spiritual world I fear, it's humans that I fear. They have the power of mind control through transference and hypnosis. MK Ultra mind control, we see that in a lot of truthers too. There are some great videos on Rumble about certain truthers and the words they use to try to hypnotize you and put you into a trance. So... Thank you, Thoth. Through this, they gain control of the mind and lead it to disorder. If one surrenders to the Black Brotherhood and signs his name in their book, he is bound to them during that incarnation. Don't sign your name in no book, guys. Man's soul must not be bound if it desires to advance in light. Surrender to the dark forces entails the shutting off of light. Only through darkness and disorder is man bound to the flesh. Therefore, he should become light and ordered. Yes, that's what's in the Yoga Sutras, too. Like, Man's suffering comes from the idea that who man thinks he is is not really who he is. We think we are our bodies. We think we are our, our identities in this world. That's just an avatar. That's just the ego. That's the false sense of self. I'm not really Bryce. That, this is just my experience right now. My soul is something eternal. And so that makes sense that the darkness would feed off of that. Would feed, And we see that. We see these infiltrators out there fucking with the egos of people. That's how they get these people who were once good get handled, get sucked into the darkness because they fuck with their egos. They blow their egos up, right? That's why everyone needs to do some fucking yoga and understand you are not your body. Your body is just your expression, the expression of your soul in this life. That's it. 
that's it. Once you, once your body dies, once Bryce dies, that's it. Bryce is dead. Then my soul moves into another avatar, which is going to be totally different, right? That's why everyone needs to do yoga, like real yoga, not like the fake shit, not like the fake shit that 99% of the yoga is fake. Find a real yoga teacher, someone who's studied with an actual teacher in India who actually is a teacher, not someone that's just taken a teacher training because that's not, that's, that's not, uh, that's not, that's cabal, right? Find someone that's actually a yoga teacher start working with them it's not gonna be fun it's not gonna feel good it's gonna be hard but that's the first step because then you start to understand that your body's amazing it's wonderful it's beautiful it has all these secrets and all these things about you and within it but it's not you it's just a tool right Does that makes sense okay the black brotherhood always tries to pull down the person who has gained development among the path of light yes yes for they have already developed powers Yes, yes, the law of one says this too. The Cassiopeians say this too. That's why I say to all the black magicians out there that have been attacking me nonstop, why, thank you. You are proving me right. Because if everything I was saying was bullshit, you would not attack me. But the fact that you've put multiple death spells on me, the fact that I have pictures of bumps and bruises and scratches and people in my own personal life have seen this happen just proves that I'm on the right path, that I know what I'm talking about. So thank you. Thank you for proving me right. Thank you for stealing all of my money. Thank you for putting all those poverty spells. Which I laugh. Because here's the thing about the darkness too. Darkness doesn't understand love, like true love or loyalty or anything like that. You know, they don't understand that. And so when you are under heavy, heavy annihilation or attack from a coven of, of the dark brotherhood and they're taking your money, they're putting death spells on you. All these things are happening. And I can't I can't get into everything that's happened one day. I'll, I'll write a book about it. But what they don't understand because they can't because they're the darkness is that when you're of the light. There are people in your life, your immediate life, your intimate life, who are also of the light. And even though they've done stuff to me that's horrific, my life really hasn't been altered. Because I have people in my life that love me. I have amazing friends. I have an amazing family. I have people that really give a shit and they see it for what it is. And so nothing that the darkness does can really, really hurt me that much. Because people in my life won't let that happen. I'm never going to be homeless. I'm never going to be without because I have friends. I understand love and so do they. That's something the darkness doesn't know. I don't have to do black magic and spells to have people like me. I've never done that. Never. The people in my life, especially the ones that have been in my life since I was like in kindergarten, never had to do spell work are you kidding me that's pathetic that's fucking pathetic every man i've ever dated has been with me for me my friends are my friends because they're my friends so that's the thing that the darkness doesn't understand is that no matter whatever they throw at you you're st you're gonna be fine because you're surrounded with love because you are love. But the closer you do get to the light, Cassiopeia, we talked about the organic portals, the more organic portals get sent your way, right? We're trying to derail you. Just know that the, the more you the more you awaken, the more you enlighten, the more attacks you're gonna get. It is for this reason that the person who is highly developed has to withstand more than the person of little or no development boom the more so i guess i just say thank you coven for showing people that i'm highly developed <laughs> you're doing me a favor all right I, i'm joking guys i mean i'm not really joking but that's a joke the more one has learned of light paradoxically the more he knows about manipulation of disorder and the more valuable he is to the black brotherhood yep the development of reason and balance is necessary so that we can separate darkness from light, order from disorder. The words of those who come to us only through the overcoming obstacles and continual striving will the goal be obtained. 
In opposition to the Black Brotherhood stands the White Lodge, striving constantly to free men from disorder and warding off the powers of the Black Brotherhood. If the seeker has his real desire on light and not power, the White Lodge will stand between him and the Black Brotherhood, for they have greater power than the Black Brotherhood. Yet the Blacks are allowed to... I don't like the way they... We'll say the Black Brotherhood. <laughs> I don't like the way he worded that. Yet the Black Brotherhood are allowed to exist, for they are a form part of the darkness, which man must overcome and rise above. Boom! Friction! Polarity! Yes! They have their purpose. It provides you with friction, which is what you need. You need friction. You can't You can't be of the light without friction. That match has everything it, it needs in it to light, but it cannot light until it is struck against the matchbook. That, my friends, is friction. You have to have friction. So really, the black, the darkness, the Black Brotherhood is being used, <laughs> their tools, basically, for the light. That sucks to be a tool. The warfare between the forces of the Black Brotherhood and the White Lodge has continued since the beginning. The masters and great adepts of the White Lodge use the power of the awakened sun and man to guard and protect the children of light. They who never lost their original oneness are also guardians of man who is their brother. They are the custodians of secrets that push back the darkness, and these are given to the ones who travel the way towards mastership. The ones who desire to be a master must learn mastery of the laws which regulate manifestation. He must conquer fear and walk unafraid on the pathway of light. As my teacher says, why fearing? Why fearing? No fear is false evidence fearing real. Why fearing? The secrets of thought regarding the operations of the law of protection are offered. Only by knowing can you conquer. I agree with that. You must use the knowledge given, otherwise it is useless. Many of the vibrations which seem negative are really from within your own self, not from outside conditions. 100%. That's your shadow side. That's your trigger. Lack of mind balance often results in the arousing of such negative thoughts that we really feel as if it's outside entities or forces were at work on us. And I will say one day, again, I will show... A lot of pictures one day if you're in the signal group or you've seen some of these pictures already when you are being presented with black magic attacks it's very evident it's very 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 evident okay you have markings on you your physical body will will sometimes look exhausted like it's it's very evident okay when it's your own shit most of the time it's your own shit yeah, that you got to work through and your body's just or your soul's just being like, hey, let's work on this now. Right. So I want to I want to make that very clear. Like it's evident when it's a black magic attack. Maybe one day I can get my boyfriend to come on and talk about what he's witnessed with me. I, I don't know if he'll do that, though, but. Yeah, it's evident. All right. Apply the light from reason to the disbalance and find if it is from within or without. If from within, start a vibrational in the pineal and send it into the irregular waves of the body. That is, send the first wave through, count one, send another wave, count three, another wave, count two, and so on. After doing this for a while, send it through in regular waves in the manner, send waves, count two, wave two, and so on. If upon examination you find that it is an outside force, you should go into a dark room or cave and draw a circle around yourself, not closing the circle until you're within it and follow the formula as given. The formula is given is serviceably for others as well as yourself the power given may be used all right so we thought talked about that and i will say it also kind of reminds me of the muna key rights which i i should get cindy on here soon the the what well, my friend who owns sacred garden yoga because she's done the muna key rights with me because she's a peruvian descent so she's shamanistic as well and so she's done the muna key rights she's the only person in my life who's ever like spit on me because <laughs> they have to drink the Florida water and then spit it on you to cleanse you. And I was just like, give it to the girl. And so, and then she spit, she spat all over me and we both started laughing. But anyway, she did the Muna key rites by drawing the circle and going up my chakras. And so maybe I can get her to come on and talk about that. Cause that's Peruvian. So it's interesting that all of these different cultures are basically saying the same thing, these ancient cultures, which obviously is Atlantean. So anyway, guys, um, once again, join us today at 10 o'clock over on Aquarius Rising Africa, where we're going to go over this on a live show. Um, if you can't catch us for the live show, that obviously is, um, is, uh, Eastern standard time. So check that 
with your local time to see the difference. And if you can't join us for the live show, you can always catch the replay. Um, and let me know your thoughts. Let's let's continue this con conversation in the comment section. Let me know um, what you think of that and what you're learning in your journey. Right? All right. And don't don't quote anybody else. <laughs> I want to know what you're learning. I don't care about the other truthers. I mean, the ones I film with are my friends, so I care about them on a friendship level. But I want to hear your research. I want to hear what you found to be true, what your experience is. I don't want you parroting what anybody else is saying, okay? So let me know from you. All right, you guys. Love you guys. Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.